Hi, this is Kate. In this video, we will cover the abdominal aorta. If you want to read more about this topic, we have an article on the Geeky Medics website. Also, make sure to subscribe to be the first to know when we release new videos. So, in this tutorial, we're going to examine the branches of the abdominal aorta, which you can see here, and talk a bit about what it supplies. So, these are the abdominal organs, as well as the abdominal wall and the inferior aspect of the diaphragm. So, it begins at the level of T12 as a continuation of the descending thoracic aorta, as it passes behind the diaphragm through the aortic hiatus. It continues inferiorly to the level of L4, where it bifurcates into the common iliac arteries. There are many branches, which may seem overwhelming at first, but they can be broadly divided into three groups. These are the unpaired visceral branches, which supply the GI tract, associated digestive organs, and also the spleen. The second group are a group of paired visceral branches, and these supply the remaining viscera that are associated with the abdomen. And finally, we have a group of parietal branches that supply non-visceral components, for example, the diaphragm or the abdominal wall. So firstly, if we look at the unpaired visceral branches, we can see if we zoom in, that there are three of them and they are placed on the anterior aspect of the abdominal aorta. So the first branch is the celiac trunk, which arises at the level of T12 and supplies the foregut structures. Next, at the level of L1, we have the superior mesenteric artery, which supplies the midgut. And finally, the inferior mesenteric artery arises at the level of L3 and it supplies the hindgut. So the second group of vessels we're going to look at are the three paired visceral branches. These are the middle suprarenal arteries, the renal arteries, and the gonadal arteries. So here we can see the thin branch, that's the middle suprarenal artery, and this supplies the adrenal glands, along with two other vessels, the superior and inferior suprarenal arteries. It's only the middle suprarenal artery, however, that it's a direct branch of the abdominal aorta. Next, we have a pair of vessels which are much larger. These are the renal arteries, and their size reflects the amount of blood that actually goes to the kidneys. Finally, in this group, we have the gonadal arteries. And the gonadal vessels arise in the abdomen, thus reflecting their position during fetal development. In the adult, after the gonads have descended, these vessels also continue inferiorly towards the ovaries in female or the testes in males. So they were the branches of the abdominal aorta. And just to summarize the visceral branches again, we've had three unpaired visceral branches arising from the anterior aspect of the abdominal aorta. These were the celiac trunk, which arises at the level of T12 to supply the foregut, the superior mesenteric artery, which arises at the level of L1 and supplies the midgut. And finally, at the level of the third lumbar vertebrae, we have the inferior mesenteric artery, which supplies the hindgut. In terms of the paired visceral branches, we had the middle suprarenal arteries, which contribute to the supply of the adrenal glands and arise at the level of T12. At the first lumbar vertebrae, we have the paired renal arteries, which supply the kidney. And finally, at the level of L2, we have the gonadal arteries, which descend to supply either the testes or the ovaries. So in future videos, we're going to look at the branches of the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery. So if you subscribe, you'll be the first to know when we release these new videos. So that's the end of this tutorial. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you thought of this video and what topics you'd like us to cover in the future. You can do this by leaving a comment or dropping us an email.